Hey there again, it's me, Gazbot, and you're you, or maybe you're not, or maybe you will be one day. But in the meantime, we're talking about March of Robots. Now, it is April 10th, to be exact, as I'm filming this. Uh, I did do March of Robots correctly. I did do it each day. However, the final two days, I had to go on a trip to the Philippines for a friend's wedding. Uh, I will likely have a video about my trip to the Philippines up eventually. But in the meantime, here is my final video for March of Robots 2018 with the final four robots. Um, if you've been following me, you likely already know what they are, but maybe you'll enjoy the process a bit. Here we are. Go! And where are we going? Well, right to the middle of this uh, day 28, I suppose. This is Jaguar 77. He is a character from my book, uh, the independent kaiju comic, The Horror A4. You can see here I'm referencing my own art. He is a, a smaller character. He's not a main character, but he shows up uh, in some flashbacks in the end, near the end of issue two. Uh, and he is a giant robot, so he fits into March of Robots. Uh, and you can see I basically had one color design like I had done of him a while back and then he's in two panels in the book and there's a little bit of inconsistency between the three images so I'm trying my best to match it as well as refine it a little bit um, and I, I originally thought I'd do this in color but I ended up not uh, I may eventually color maybe make a print out of it but I just wanted like a cool dynamic back in the heyday here's what you'd see Jaguar 77 doing and you can see I was really struggling with this helmet too he's got sort of a a little bit of a samurai armor helmet thing going on, but not specifically that. It's not like I, I could reference the helmet and make it work. It's more just uh, evocative, if you will. Like, I didn't look at samurai armor. I just thought about it a little bit when I designed him. Um, but again, it's one of these weird things where I did one quick design sketch, and then he's into panel. So I didn't spend a lot of time finalizing every little detail. And they all kind of look like him, but I'm doing a lot of designing on the page here. Uh, and trying to make this like the definitive version, although that's a weird thing to do because I'm putting him in this action dynamic pose. And really, if I wanted a definitive version, it'd be better to have you know him standing in a neutral pose or a turnaround. But with these sort of secondary tertiary characters that are not you know going to be shown that often, I tend to not put too much time making the design super super finished. Uh, and, and again, I mean it's finished, but it's sort of like oh, are there three fins on his chest or four? And you know, are there how are the gears on his arm? Are they two lines or is there three pipes or you know so things like that sometimes uh, change over time. Uh, and if he shows up more, eventually it'll probably all get finalized. But as I said, with this, I wanted to have not just him standing there, but a dynamic pose. Like, you can't see the rest of it, but I have some uh, monster kaiju enemies that are roughed in. And here, again, I'm now I'm like, oh, the arm doesn't go like that. And so I'm redesigning the arm on the page uh, to match what I'd had before, as well as, uh, I guess I was adjusting the, the pose of the hand a little bit. So uh, I'm doing this sort of, D dynamic pose but also still designing man i'm really messing with that arm and this is at once again 32 times speed so uh this took me a while i don't know how long uh, i was up very late that night this was uh when wednesday night so i had uh not yet headed to the philippines and i had uh, a teach a comic class the next day and uh, i might speed this up because even at 32x this is taking a long time so i'm gonna speed it up Okay, I times to by two, which means what? It is at 64x. Uh, so you can see basically what I'm doing is the inking at this point. Um, and with with robots, sometimes it's more difficult than with a monster because you have to get these really straight lines, um, and they they have to be a little bit dead. I mean, you could you you want variation of line as far as like thickness of metal and is it close to the camera and all that stuff. But unlike organic things, you want it to be more or less a straight line. Uh, again, unless there's damage or weathering or there's a reason. But on a baseline, that's what you're going for. And so there's a lot of me drawing a line 15 times, like just stroke, 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 erase, stroke, erase. And that's the benefit and the curse of working digital. Because if I was uh, working traditional and putting an ink line down, I'd have to just do my best and then it's done. And it might not be great. In this, I keep doing it until it's quote unquote perfect, but that could result in me redrawing it 15 times one line you know <laughs> uh, but I am able to erase things as well and so like for example here are those little I don't know what you want to call them those little panels on his arm I made a point of making them slightly recessed so I have a straight line connecting the two rings on his forearm and then I drew in the little panel and then because it's digital I then moved it in a little bit so it's almost like there's an armor shell over something underneath those panels are just slightly in uh, and that is a benefit of the, the digital um, I'm mostly done here I think I'm just putting in some designs. Oh, no, this is the final, like, super little tiny designs. And again, you could see this is at 64 times and, and how slow I'm going. Man, uh, oh, those are some plugs on his head that I had just a detail I forgot to put in all together. And this is just me putting, you know, this, this is the equivalent of panel lining. For anybody that's just Gundam or anything like that, I'm just, you know, adding extra little tiny lines that 
you know, may or may not be there uh, factually, but they make it look more technical, make it look more detailed. I like it. And then, of course, some shading because uh, he has a big energy sword that he's swinging. So while I wanted to do a lot of that in the color and oh, you can see for a second, there's the monster. So I, I want to do a lot of that in the color, which ended up being the gray. I did want to indicate a little bit in the inks. So here I am dropping in the first layer of gray. Now, this is not shading. Uh, this is more coloring. These are like, oh, this is parts that are supposed to be black or dark gray. So I usually will do that uh, in my comments which is mostly black and white uh, well it's all black and white on the inside as a color cover but when I do um, black and white grayscale stuff I do try to choose at least one tone that is sort of the color tone and again what I mean by that is I'm not putting shading in it's shading goes over it and so where the shading hits things that are white it's lighter and then where it hits that darker color it, it still adds shading uh, he's supposed to have a glowing eye which I just gave there uh, it's in in the book it's actually green uh, his saber weapon there is green too but as you can see i was working on it and i was sort of going to start throwing in color but at the last minute i decided to do black and white grayscale and that's what i did for the final four march of robots again i may go back in and color this up at some point but here you can see he's just demolishing this two-headed serpent beat so up next this is thursday uh and this is me working on my ipad previously that was on my cintiq in photoshop this is on my ipad in procreate with the apple pencil once again uh, i had some rough sketches sometimes it, the iPad uh, with Procreate specifically does automatic recording and it basically does a time lapse where it only records when you're putting a stroke down or racing something. And man, you can see I had trouble with that horn. Uh, and so I had a couple rough designs that got, I don't know, just disappeared. So you're just watching me basically ink. Uh, and I don't even know if I'd call this ink. This is like a uh, tight pencil, I guess, over my final rough. And this is Ratchet, who is a Transformer. He was in Generation 1 back in the 80s, but this is the Transformers Prime version, which was on TV like three years ago, I think, at this point. Uh, this being 2018. And then you can see I blammed in some color. The color I actually did at home on Photoshop, which is why it just blasted in real quick like that. But I like the glowing eye style of the Prime characters. And uh, this was he was voiced by Jeffrey Combs, and he was a cool character. So I'm glad I did it. So the next one, uh, this again is on my iPad Pro, Procreate, Apple Pencil, blah, 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 blah. This was Friday, and uh, I was doing this on the plane to the Philippines. So I just imagine me with my little tray table in front of me. Most everybody else was asleep because it's like 12-hour flight, and I'm up there working on this. Uh, and Q had given me the idea to do a kind of mecha gas bot, which I've actually done twice before, but I wanted to do a slightly different style. Uh, kind of make it uh, incorporate some of the various robotic styles i had done so far um specifically the eyes i ended up doing like the glowing ratchet eyes i just talked about in prime but um yeah i, I wanted to incorporate uh, my hoodie to be kind of because i wear a hoodie a lot to be sort of like you know i don't know robot parts i don't know what you want to call it fins or whatever and i tried to get in my you know sideburns and i, I for lack of a better term i kind of have a faux hawk but uh, it's not technically a faux hawk but close enough uh and so i just uh, here's the thing though I didn't have a mirror, and I didn't have a photo reference of me. Uh, I mean, obviously, it should be very easy to get because I have Facebook and stuff like that, but I was on the plane, so I had no connectivity. I think I may have had a couple pictures randomly on my phone. I, I suppose I could have taken a picture of myself with a flash and used it, but I didn't. So I may have looked at whatever random picture I had of myself on the phone. Uh, oh, I originally had an autobot symbol there. I forgot about that, and I took it off. And then, oh, I give myself that pack on the back because I often wear a backpack. So again, I'm taking my hoodie and my backpack, and those cords that look like wires are actually supposed to be, you know, the, the strings for my hoodie. Um, Overall, I wasn't too unhappy with it. I really liked the body. The face just, I, I don't know, it kind of looks like me, but I wasn't quite happy with it. I think it's the goofy smile, uh, which even though I am kind of a goofy dude and smile a lot, I don't think of myself that way. Like when I imagine myself, it's more of like a, a serious face or I, I, I don't know. It just doesn't quite look right. Um, but again, I'm, I'm turning myself into a robot and not using reference. So I don't know how close I could have got. I, I think I would have had to be at my home studio looking at pictures and spending more time than the, I mean, this took me a while. It's probably took me a couple hours on the plane, but I'm making excuses, but I'm not making excuses like, and that's why it's not great. It's more just sharing the process that, you know, I wasn't thrilled with this. I, I did my best uh, to do the best job I could. And I feel like I fell short, which happens all the time. Um, but I didn't fall short of getting the picture done I needed for that day to fulfill the challenge, even though I was on a plane to the Philippines because I am what? A professional. Um, some of the lessons you can see here that I've learned, aside from the kind of glowing eye, which I put in in the color section, is the heavy blacks I put in to, again, make it clear that I'm not, a, you know, a guy that's a little bit boxy, but I'm actually a robot with like these, you know, I, I don't know what it is exactly. Uh, I didn't, <laughs> I don't have a, a logical reason. I just know that the heavy blacks work. I mean, again, flat planes and, and deep things, but 
but more aesthetically and more emotionally, it just works. And here I am throwing in the colors. Um, I originally had, I gave myself green eyes. Now I have sort of brownish hazel, but I wanted to have the glowing eyes, so I faked it and gave myself green eyes. Uh, and here I am messing around with the background, and I wanted to do sort of a cell shading like I had done with a lot of my G1 Transformer uh, headshots, so that it's um, not super gradient colored, not very painterly, not very subtle, but more stark. You know, this is a robot, and here's the, uh, the heavy shadows. Again, kind of like with the heavy blacks and the inking. <laughs> I actually don't remember if I did a highlight layer. Right now I'm looking, and it looks like just a... A shadow layer. Oh no, there's a little bit of highlight, a little bit of white going in, and uh, the background also. I, I kind of used blue to offset the darker colors I had on the robot. Um, but if I was doing this again, or, or I would probably redo the blue. Oh, I did like that. I put in sort of a purple, like as though there was a light to the side or something, and I reduced the opacity very low. I think it was like 15%, but I think it just took the edge off of it being a little bit too sterile. And as you can see, I've begun uh, the rough sketches on the final day. This would be uh, Saturday the 31st. Um, I, I may, it may have been Sunday for me because at this point I was in the Philippines. Uh, and aside from a, you know, 12 hour and then a two hour flight and, you know, basically 24 hours of traveling, there's a time difference. So I was ahead of day. So I believe for me it was Easter when I was working on this, even though by American time it was still Saturday. The point I'm making is th this still was done. Both of these were done in time. Uh, they may have not been posted in time because of having trouble with connectivity at my uh, hotel and the airport. But this was the final. Now this is a foot soldier from Ninja Turtles, which is a robot because it is the cartoon slash toy version. Unlike the comics, they were robots, so it counts. And this was voted on. Um, it did not get a ton of votes for uh, the March of Robots thing. Uh, not as many as I thought it would anyway. But So this one won by a very slim margin. As I had said before, you know, one or two votes could make a difference, and in this case it did. So uh, we get the Foot Soldier, and it was specifically uh, the toy version, the action figure version. I don't know if this was inspired, the request, because I had done the Mazinga Z uh, for Scott Circlin and Cirkworks, um, but that's what I did. And so um, to make it look more like the toy, I made sure to put in the accessories that the toy had and keep them gray, including that little frame that it came with, which wasn't really in the show. And while it's very similar to the show version, I definitely looked at a picture of the old late 80s, early 90s figure for reference and did my best to match that. I also... Uh, on this one, did not put highlights. I only put shadow like uh, an animated model or more plastic. And there you can see I kind of jumped ahead, but that's the background. And that was the final day that was voted on. I was pretty happy with it. I might make a print of it eventually. And that's it for March of Robots 2018. Uh, I may do a follow-up video on like what I've learned, what I should have done, what I didn't do, what I robot robot. Anyway, that's it. Uh, I never regret doing a challenge as long as I complete it successfully, which I did. Uh, despite the ups and downs, it's always going to make you a better artist and it's always going to help. But I created some prints along the way and yada, yada, yada. Seinfeld reference, I guess. So, Gazbot, you, goodbye. Hey there again, once me and you for what? Final video from March of Roads, which my, which, which, which.